All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to 2021 season one. And uh, for the first week of uh, this season, we are at the suburbs of uh, Sydney, Australia, at um, the now defunct Oran Park Raceway. Uh, and yeah, qualifying is already on the way. And uh, we'll uh, be on board number one car, David Gaspers, for a lap around this track. Wait for him to finish this lot. Now breaking hard into the final corner onto the front stretch. It's a uphill turn. Many drivers will run wide slightly here to use the pit entrance line to have a better speed on exit. I'm shifting fifth, straight line, and uh, there's the first turn, the sweeper. And the hard braking down to third. Actually, second for second turn. We're gonna see most of the uh, move being done here today. Now, into the technical section of the track. So, second gear right hander, followed by another long second gear right hander. It's actually third. Quite on exit, and then onto the Yokohama Bridge, the crossover, into the asses. The drivers are going to follow each other closely here, and then set up a pass on the final turn. Now into the dog leg, another set of right left leg, and then uh, onto the final turn. It's a rather medium speed track, and uh, the track is not very wide, but um, it will be great racing for these uh, slightly low-powered clubman sports, uh, clubman level cars. Uh, so we actually have uh, Daniel Sadro on pole, followed by Austin Winner, and then David Gosper is actually in third. Let's see if uh, anyone else is still on the track. I mean, Orza is still. He actually just finished his second lap because his first lap was invalid. Now we'll put him in eighth. Flavio Angelo. Looks like he's not having any luck setting a lap. He's maybe still doing more practice. Chris Murakami in number nine. He has done his qualifying lap as well, which is uh, doing a bit more practice laps. Antonio Reyes in number 7. His usual racing number is uh, double 7, and uh, luckily he's in the 7th car. This race he is uh, in 4th at the moment. Jeff Fisher has also done his qualifying attempts. Actually, that will be all. Everyone has finished the qualifying except uh, the number 17 car, Jeremy Lewis. That's a rather familiar name, hailing from Texas. So a uh, very tight margin for uh, pole time, that will be 21,000th and uh, that will be top 4 within 1 second. Flavio not enjoying the track by far. <laughs> It's a wonderful track, Flavia. An icon of Australia.
And yeah. we had the V8 Supercar Series that used to race this track. I feel like uh, in today's race we are going to see uh, majority the, the overtaking being done on the first turn or on the front stretch. And uh, the Is drivers are going to track? follow each other and draft and bump draft each uh, other. Unfortunately, it's a housing estate now. In the uh, middle it section. It was shut down by the government. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jeremy Lewis is not setting all time. I got to race the very last race that was ever run there, which was the uh, go-kart state titles. All right, and uh, qualifying is done, grid is set. So um, on pole, we have uh, Daniel Sandro from Wisconsin, followed by Austin Winner. On the outside of first row, yep, lock all, have fun. defending champion David Gaspers starting third. That could be ready. Yeah, beat um, Austin by a mere Daylight. ten point margin last season for the championship. Look, Antonio Ray starting fourth. Prudence in the back of the field, please. Chris Morakami fifth. Jeremy Zoris sixth. Remember this Stephen race is one seventh. down here in the first corner. Emil Warzar starting eighth. Green, green, green. Actually, everyone gridded very quickly, and we are already racing. Bad start from Sergio, good start from Winner. Now, Winner is into the lead already. Gasper is trying a move on Sergio before the first turn. And the Gasper is through. Winner goes a little bit wide, losing. A little bit of time, but Noki has the inside line to uh, turn three. If it comes for a run outside, but uh, on next turn, winner still has the inside. But Gaspers has pulled ahead. Our defending champion has advanced to the leading position Sorry, within I four turns. Looks like there was there was some uh, contact between. Orza and the Zoritz. But uh everyone has single fouled out. Oh no, winner into the wall. And that's Murakami um getting hooked onto the curves. And the uh, spawn as well. That's disastrous. Yeah, not a good start for winner and Murakami. Looks like uh, Murakami still has He's calling one piece. He still can get up some positions, but uh, Austin Werner, meanwhile, having a very heavily damaged car. Now on the inside of Luke Penley, battling for 14th. Meanwhile, uh, David Gaspers still leading the way. Sorry, Phil. We are two laps into the 20 lap race. Pulled by Daniel Sergio in second and the uh, last season's Spec 2 championship winner Antonio Reyes is currently in third. Uh, tonight's race has a SOF of uh, 3.5k, so uh, I think Antonio is the median, but he is the number 7 car, so we do have a top heavy field. Um, tonight, currently Stephen Beersley in fourth, followed by Yoni Zoritz. Looks like it's, it is a top Sorry, three breakaway. Dad. Sorry for the brown moment. So uh, Emil Oza and Berg Tridler, six and a seven. And the uh, local favorite, Philip Barry. Is in eighth at the moment, pulled by Jeff Frischer. Then Claudio Vicalabri. I'll just go with that pronunciation. <laughs> and then uh, Steve, Stevie Ray round out, running out of top 10 at the moment. Yeah, I, I didn't have time to introduce the grid because everyone grid it so quickly. So it's uh, Jeff Jacobson currently. Me, Claudio, in, sorry. Uh, 
told that there was some tongue contact between Stevie Ray and uh, Claudio Bacalabri. Austin Winner still stuck in 12th position at the moment, I think. Luke Penley, Flavio Angelo, Chris Murakami only in 17th. Jeremy Lu is uh, enjoying his time in the rear. And uh, we now switch the camera back to the front and uh, to the third lap. Sergio trying to move on the inside of the sweeper. Very loose there. The second turn. It looks like Oscars have a little bit of speed advantage on the outside. They're still side by side. Not anymore. Race breaking a little bit late there. Trying to a piece of the scrap. This is a very flowing section. You exit the previous turn and then you turn in as soon as you get onto the crossover bridge. And, uh, these turns are all medium speed sweepers. Looks like you don't want to uh, go too wide on that turn, otherwise uh, the rear frame will bottom out on the exit curve. I think that was the... that was not the Asics. That turn has a sponsor name that uh, I'm not really too interested to talk about it. There is some damage on the rear of uh, Zoris car. Now he's uh, dropping back slightly. Actually, heavy damage on Zoris' car. He will lose a lot of time to uh, the second pack behind him. Only Emil Orza is still uh, pulling a gap between distancing him to himself to between uh, him and uh, Brick Tradler. Brick Tradler running a. Uh, I think that is a BMW Art Car livery. I think he made it himself, he posted a picture about it uh, a couple of days ago in our Discord discussion channel. It is still a full car battle for six at the moment, and uh, soon I think Zoris will drop back and join them. Well, back to the front, now uh, Gospers ran away and uh, Sadler is under pressure from race. Razor dipping his wheel on the inside the grass slightly. It's a little bit, bit banking on the grass. It makes me wonder if you can use it as a mid-corner speed boost. Similar to what they do on the mountain roads. David Gosper is locking his wheels a bit to the, on the heavy braking zone to turn two. But that's not gonna affect his uh, speed at all. Steven Beasley currently running only 6 and uh, Steve Ray actually has retired from the race. So does uh, Chris Murakami. So... Very unfortunate day for him. And, uh, whoops. We're not gonna go too far into the replay. I was wondering uh, what happened between them, but uh, it just takes too long of a time to show it on screen. Oran Park is definitely less a trough track than many other tracks on the service. I think the front stretch will be the only part that uh, trough playing to erasing as a factor. And Sergio again on the inside of Gospers. Looks like uh, David is not holding the inside at, at all. Maybe outside is his uh, preferred line, but uh, not this time. Sergio, Sergio has the lead, but uh, now Gospers has the inside. They're still too wide. Like it is actually very hard to overtake uh, 
of the sweeper into turn two because you have to compromise the speed on the inside of the sweeper. There's a uh, there's no chance for overtaking the asses, neither in the dog leg. So uh, everything Sajo can do is uh, follow Gospers as close as he can. I to the final turn again. Will Sajo put another run? We will find out. Race is still uh, waiting patiently for opportunity to come. But the best strategy for him is to push Sergio and uh, let Sergio and the Gospers battle it out. All, all of the three leaders are getting loose on the braking again. Looks like loose might be the way, way to go on this track. There's no move being done. Let's uh, get to the rear of the grid. And that's the uh, wrong button. Doris actually still having a comfortable lead over the second pack despite his heavy damage. As he uh, go for a bit of uh, drift on the exit of that turn, Berg Traveler and then overtaking uh, Emil Wozer now leading the second pack, followed by Jeff Fisher in the number three. I can see some damage on the rear of Wozer's car. There might have been some contact between the two. And now it's uh, Philip Barry and uh, Austin Winner. Winner still going strong despite the, the heavy, the heavy damage he received on lap one. Go on board uh, Antonio Race to have a better look at the leading battle. Sergio still not finding a chance by far. Many drivers are still wearing their uh, special pink painting scheme uh, for the V run off yesterday as a uh, support to uh, Borka Yudrati family. I think uh, Antonio Reyes might be using auto clutch and the uh, pedal shift. You can see that uh, his engine rev goes off slightly every time we hit up shift. And you can clearly see that Sergio is gaining time on him every time he shifts. That might be why, uh, maybe another reason why Race has been waiting on the straight line for an uh, opportunity to execute a overtake to attack the leaders. Steven Beasley is still running, lonely in 4th position. Though he's holding 5th as well. And Jeff Frischer overtaking uh, Berg Tridler for 6th. And uh, Austin Winner has gone through both Emil Orza and uh, Philip Berry. By the looks of it, the closest battle currently on the field is between the lead and between 6th. So go on ball Daniel Sergio. So they go too wide again through this. Uh, it's like uh, David Gaspers has his um, defense planned very well. He goes to the outside, 
to turn one, turn two every time, and he holds the line. He holds his position every time. If that was me, I'd block the inside, as uh, that is the more obvious option for a to execute a block. Like uh, Flavio Andalo has retired from the race as well. Guess he's uh, not having a good time on this track. You get a cut through cut off the uh, slowdown part. Brett Traveler has shift. fallen behind Emil Orza. Maybe there was some uh, previous incidents. Actually, Austin Werner is up to sixth. With such a passive car, it's an excellent driving from him. He is actually closing on Yoni Zoris. So he is posting thanks in the text chat. Maybe everyone is just letting him by, scared of him going so quick. <laughs> By the looks of it, uh, Austin is not suffering from any steering damage, but uh, the bodywork damage is go definitely going to hinder his straight line speed. As there are still several laps to go, I will say he maybe still can put a charge on fifth position. Yep, it's a tight battle for uh, 7th position. Let's go on board uh, Philip Barry. That's uh, Orza going a little bit too deep into the turn. And the player's car. What some mistake looks like uh, Bert Kettler has gained quite some time on Orza. Away. And there is still no position change for the lead at the moment. Jasper is going wide for a little bit uh, better to pick up the throttle early and go for a quick exit. We see in the background that's uh, is it? I think that's Claudio Macalabri going through the overpass. Nice screen up there, Emil. Like there's some problem in the back. Nope, just me. Emil Orza has uh, made a mistake that will yeah, drop we'll in the for the back, but provisionally within the attack range of uh, Jeff Jacobson. I think there's no penalty behind it, behind them. The uh, Dan Sagro's car is slowly closing in, but uh, he just doesn't have a run on Gospers.
top three drivers are still nose to tail, but there is just no move being made. That's, uh, that is not because of the car, that is more just showing really how quick David Gospers is. Sago is very close on Gospers. Maybe we can see a run this time by. Will uh, will him or Gospers try a different approach to the first complex? Still the same thing. Gospers are outside. Sago are inside. Breaking a bit early. Then heavy braking. Uh, Sado on the steering oh, slightly. Oh, Actually, Sado is through. Sado uh, finally made it work. I think that might be the first lead change since lap one. Uh, Daniel Sado back onto the leading position after the start. Actually, Gary Gaspers. Having a better exit is going to try to pass Sergio in the asses. We'll see how this plays out. They are still side by side, and uh, Sergio lifting up throttle slightly, letting uh, Gaspers by, as he does not want to lose another position. Now before to go next time by, it looks like uh, Sergio is really picking up his pace now. Up to 5th gear, Sergio once again going for inside. Gosper is still holding outside, both of them wiggle slightly again. And Sergio is through again. It seems to be a game of switcheroo now. Sergio has a slight lead, but uh, Gosper is at the inside line. There is still overlap between the two, not anymore. Sergio has to wait for another lap to try for a pass, or not. He's actually pulling slightly right, attempting to recreate Gosper's pass on the last lap, but he does not have enough speed to do it. Clock is ticking, and uh, it will be three laps. Three laps to go this time. By Sato has to get something to work in order to win the race. Actually, they are going for something different this time. Gaspers on the inside, Sato on outside. They are on their reverse row this time. So I guess it is pretty pretty obvious that uh, Gospers has uh, pulled off Sergio this time. Actually, uh, Sergio had a, a bit of wiggle mid turn, almost giving Race a chance at second position. That was really bad. Might be some trouble for the back. It was between uh, Philip Barry and uh, Burke Treadler. Jeff Jacobson now in 10th position, having gained a position from Emil Orza. Who likely has spawn again. Winner has gone through uh, Zoritz and uh, he's actually approaching Steven Biesley now. Biesley also having a little bit of damage on his left rear quarter of his car. Jeff Fisher also closing on the pack. Jeff Fisher has uh, a clean car compared to uh, the three better the cars ahead. A amazing recovery drive from Winner. Looks like now Winner has, has the potential to get fourth position. Still no position changing the lead. Mm -hmm. 
Now the battle is all at two different places. It's battle for fourth and battle for first. They are separated by a 15 second gap. As I think everyone else outside of the top, the lead pack has run into various of issues. Also, uh, Steven Beardsley de debuting his uh, new paint scheme in this race. Why flag in the air? One lap to go. Brought to you by RaceWise, new title sponsor of this season's uh, Weekend Warrior. Looks like Gospers has a comfortable gap over Sadro. And also Sadro having a comfortable gap over Race. The dust might have been settled for the lead battle. But we will still put our camera, put on the focus on them, since this is the last lap. I'll say there are two chances for Sergio to make an oversight. One is here having a better exit, as uh, Gaspers did a couple laps before, as uh, Sergio does not. And another chance will be at the final turn. We'll switch camera to the battle for fourth briefly. It actually has became a four-way battle for fourth. They have uh, lost another second to the lead pack last time by. Maybe there was more contact. So the lead pack has came through the dog leg. Now on to last turn. Sergio looking for the inside, but uh, Gospers has enough speed advantage on the outside to hold him off. And David Gaspers. Gaspers, you're tonight's winner. David Sergio finishing second after starting from pole. Antonio Race third. And uh, well, for fourth, uh, Beardsley holding off a uh, winner on the inside. And uh, Beardsley finishing fourth. Amazing recovery drive from Austin Winner after the first half crash. Yanni Zoris uh, also driving a very damaged car for the majority of the race, finishing sixth. And now it will be Jeff Fisher, 7th. Local favorite, uh, Philip Berry, finishing 8th. Greg Fader, 9th. Jeff Jacobson running off top 10. Luke Penley, 11th. Jeremy Lewis uh, having a chill race behind, finishing 12th. Uh, Emil Orza, many mistakes, finishing 13th. Claudio Lacolabri, finishing 14th. And that will be your grid tonight. We have uh, three retirements. Uh, Flavio Angelo, Chris Murakami and uh, Steve yeah, Ray. Both very unfortunate will, accidents. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, what has happened I'll to I'll take the Steve. second of laps of uh, concentration and you're off into the grass. Yeah, it, it really looks like Steve has gotten on the brakes slightly too late and uh, ran into uh, Claudio. See what happened next to him. I guess he's uh, trying to give back his position to uh, Claudio Vacalabri after contact. You can see uh, he's really slowing down, and uh, that's Flavio Andalo going off track there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's very unfortunate. Chris actually has braked earlier than... I think that's Claudio, right? Yes. And he's still running to the back of him. That's a bit bizarre. And uh, yep. Pretty unfortunate. Yeah, tough race for uh, Chris. And uh, it's post race interview time. Off track, except it was in the first right hand corner, and there's that escape road. It's not apparently an off track oh really that's interesting yeah that little thing that goes off to the left 
on the exit of the left hander is like a strip of pavement and you can take that and it doesn't give you any incidences or time time penalty or anything. Okay, um, let's do an interview with uh, tonight's winner, uh, David Gospers. Uh, dominating performance in the race for uh, Mr. Gospers. Um, we can see you uh, holding off Sajo both on the outside and the inside of uh, the first complex. Is there any uh, specific explanation why you chose outside for the first couple of attempts? Uh, I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very uh, perfect response from uh, Mr. Go uh, Mr. Gospers. Um, Mr. Sardo, do you have any comments on that? After yeah, trying so hard himself. to overtake him, but uh, failed to do so. Oh, he's muted. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Race, uh, finishing third today. Hello, hello. Any uh, comments? Uh, it's my mic working? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was a nice movie. I was watching all the race from behind. I'm happy <laughs> to stay in third place. <laughs> yeah. All right, that will be your uh, podium finishers tonight. And uh, it was actually quite an exciting battle for fourth on the last lap. Um, Mr. Beardsley obviously having a lot of pressure. Yeah, that was uh, that was intense. Austin was giving me a bunch of uh, love taps there the last couple of laps. Uh, I could tell tell he wanted by pretty bad. Uh, yeah, he had a crash on lap one though. So that was rather I don't know unusual to uh, see him doing that. <laughs> Maybe just a slight mischarge on that turn. And. Uh, is there any additional interview comments from uh, our drivers? I'll take the silence as a no, and uh, that will be your broadcast tonight. And uh, we will see you at uh, Bathurst, still in Australia, yeah. next week. Thank you for the yeah. broadcast. We was yeah. very happy you doing Big that. Empty. And uh, yep, that'll be it.